What is cracking, folks? I'm Dylan, and you're watching H3 Humper. side mirror works just the passenger doesn't so it's got to just be a bad connection between this side the driver's side and that mirror over there because the mirror motor works I checked that I just thought of another thing I could try is running the connector for the driver's side running little wires across to the passenger side to see if indeed it will still work. Alright, so I've got some wires rigged up running across over to that side. And now time to test again. Alright, that's all hooked up. Let's see if it works. Alright, so I'm still out here trying to figure out the power mirror situation. Got the door off. Went to roll down the window so I could take the door off. And uh, the door switch was making this weird noise. So now there's something else going on with wiring. And uh, here's what we got going. I noticed a lot of corroded looking connectors. And one of them looks like something broke off in there. So now, I've got this over here. This is the door side connector. The waterproof switch thing. The three that looked really corroded were these bottom ones, these bottom three. Flip the thing back around. Gray, red, white, black, white. Those are the power window wires. So my thoughts are that Corrosion on those three terminals is the whole problem. The issue is at this door jam. That's that little red bit that was sticking out on the other side. So, yeah, that's definitely broken off things. This seems like a bad long term solution. But it does work well for removing the door, and I'm sure assembly is easy. Now I'm at a point of debating whether or not I just want to hardwire all this because all all those connectors are really corroded and weak one of them's broken one of them looks like it's about to break the rest of them are extremely corroded I've healed this all back now and these ones are also all corroded one of them has a connector broken off inside of it all of them are the same colors color wires so I'm debating just kind of making this connector work and the other one to keep it waterproof. The drawback to doing it that way is um, obviously I can't take the door off very easily without cutting all those wires. I plan on having AC in here and if I go off-roading I'm not just going to ditch my doors somewhere. They're in really good shape so I think I'm just going to uh, salvage this. I'll probably cut out this spot where all the connectors actually go and then I'll run the wires straight through there. So I'll still have a sealed connection uh, that's watertight. Its level of weather tightness shouldn't be compromised at all by this. The sacrifice is disconnection. At the same time that sacrifice is also a nice positive because it means I won't have to worry about these connections corroding or uh, breaking off. They're really cheap and flimsy. I'll use butt connectors. It offers the same weather tightness, it just, again, I won't be able to disconnect very easy. <sighs> so now I've got a whole lot of butt splicing to do. I think I've got enough of them here. They're a little bigger than what's needed for these, really, but. Um, I don't want to buy new ones. These are kind of expensive and I want to use them up. All 
There we go. Now I've got a nice little tunnel to run all those wires that I'll be butt connecting. It'll still give me the weather tight seal on the outside, creating a little channel for them to run through. So now I can just pop this right back in there. Pop this little locking tab back in there. Bang. Better than factory, baby. And now I'm gonna pop all these wires out of this little block here. Strip them back, get them ready to connect through the tunnel. I've got all these little beddies attached. Got them strung through the little waterproof thing. Listen up these wires. And got them all pulled through. Hopefully I'll have enough room to kind of peek in to see what colors I'm working with and to crimp. It's going to be really, really tight, which kind of stinks, but we'll, we'll figure it out. I took a bend out of the wires, actually, and now I've got a good chunk, so I'll have plenty of room to crimp and such. Got all ten of my steel toes in it. That was scary. Looks like this little length of wire will be just enough to get it done. Alright, I'm now at a point where I've got all the wires stripped. Half of them got the butts on them, half of them are ready to connect. You got really limited space here, so it's going to be difficult. I disconnected the battery, so none of these wires are touching each other, making shit happen. Let's do this. Yellow to yellow. And then each connection I make, I'll just go back and make sure that they feel snug. These ones are good. First connection down. Alright, so I've got all those wires crimped on there. Pulled them to make sure everything's snug. Now I'm going to pull it into that little cavity. Oh my goodness, this is incredibly tedious. I think I got it. Whew. Time to see if it works. I'm very, very excited. All right, so I'm learning I most definitely should have marked all these uh, wires before I cut them. Now I just flipped some wires around, stripped them, flipped them around. Now I've got the power window and power locks working properly, so I'm gonna solder these together, tape them off. And I've certainly learned for next time. Uh, one of those things I regret so much now, and I could have done something so simple to prevent it. Lizzie. Hey, baby. Alright, so... Lucy and I are out here. Then I'm gonna do one last test. Make sure the power windows roll up, down, the power locks unlock and lock from this passenger door switch. I wired stuff backwards the first time, so when I rolled down the window, it would also lock the door, and when I'd try rolling it up, it wouldn't roll up. So, <laughs> just a reason to mark my wires next time. The functionality works properly. The power mirror still doesn't work, so now that's next up on the list. So I just finished tinning the tips of these conductors here. And we'll see. Hopefully that'll give us a good enough to con connection to 
check the power mirror and oh boy do I hope that power mirror works. Alright, reconnect the battery. Alright, so I'm inside the cab now. Got my power mirror working on this side. Now I'm switching it over to passenger. Oh yes, oh my god. Finally. Nice, okay. And I'll put that door panel back on and I should be good to go. I'll retest everything and yeah, I'm super happy. Final test, fully reassembled. Still works. Switch to passenger. Oh, perfect. That is so satisfying. Passenger window. Still works. Work in. Lock. Unlock. Perfect. Well, that's it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you for watching. I am so happy to have both of my power mirrors working, the power windows, power locks. I just feel so relieved. I was starting to get really overwhelmed with thinking um, it was going to take a lot of work to get going. But thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon.